Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Making Moves. I am so excited for this episode because I've been wanting to do a solo podcast like this for a while and basically you saw the title, we're going to play We're Not Really Strangers with myself because I feel like, I don't know, like I share so much on the internet but I feel like y'all don't like know me the way obviously I know me or like some of my friends know me so I feel like this would be a good start for you to get to know me more on a deeper level. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'm so excited about this. Y'all know I'm like the biggest We're Not Really Strangers fan ever. I love the game. It's basically one of those games that you get at like Target or Amazon or wherever and it's like a card game and you pull out a card. It's great. It's typically played with like a different like a stranger or someone you know or like someone you're getting to know. I play it with my friends all the time. And basically how the game works is you just pick a card from the stack and you read it and the other person answers. So I'm going to be playing it with myself. So let's get into it. By the way, I have this game in real life, but we're going to play it from the internet because I forgot the cards today. The first question is, finish the sentences. Strangers would describe me as blank. Only I know that I am blank. So I have to fill in the blanks. Strangers would describe me as... I feel like strangers would describe me as outgoing. I don't give a fork. Confident. Like, that's how strangers would describe me. I only know that I am low-key sensitive. (laughs) I feel like I'm realizing this recently. Like, I feel like I used to think I would never admit that I'm sensitive because I used to think it was such a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Um, I'm actually trying to embrace it more and, like, tell people when something that they say or do hurts me uh, because then it just makes my life better. Like, being like, hey, by the way, that, like, kind of bothered me. And then they're like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Like, It's good to be in tune with your emotions, but I feel like I definitely have this like, I'm TK, I'm juicy, I don't give a fork mentality, which I definitely can channel. And like that isn't inauthentic. It's just that deep down, like I am sensitive and I am a cancer. So it makes sense. But yeah, that's the first one. Kind of fun. I'm like, (sighs) nervous admitting admitting that I'm sensitive like how dare I admit that I'm sensitive (laughs) I don't know why I feel like I just grew up in a family where like we didn't embrace crying like or being upset like it was just like shove under the rug was the way to go which I feel like in some scenarios like that is good like just move on like who cares um but I think it is okay to be upset about something and like let someone know So I'm trying to do that more. What does prioritizing your mental health look like in this chapter of your life? Get specific. I'm just going to be kind of honest. Like, I feel like I don't deal with mental health like some of my friends do. Like, I don't, I I feel really grateful. Like, I, I definitely deal with anxiety, but like not, I don't really have depressive episodes or struggle with depression. Um if at all, let alone like the way my friends do. So yeah, I just want to like put that on the table because the way I deal with my mental health is obviously going to be way different than with someone that like deeply struggles with depression or anything else mental health related. How am I prioritizing my mental health right now? Honestly, having alone time and saying no to things. I feel like I my entire life I have put others before myself which is a great quality to have but I it's just time to like prioritize me and like even if it's someone's birthday even if it's someone's party they've been planning even if it's this event like whatever like if I need to stay home and like rest that's for my mental health and for my mental sanity and to help my social battery like I don't know I feel like I used to be like, I felt so obligated to go everywhere and because I didn't want to miss an opportunity or just like I didn't want to let my friends down or let whatever. And I feel like prioritizing my mental health means telling myself I'm not letting my friends down by saying no to going to things. It's just because I need my alone time and I need space and time to think. 
and time to veg out. Like I feel like I never give myself that. So yeah, that's what prioritizing my mental health looks like. I think also journaling has been huge for me and getting off my phone. And the only way I will get off my phone is if I have something else that's distracting me. So like coloring, reading, watching a show, cooking, all of those things have been really helping. What's the most pain you've ever been in that wasn't physical? I feel like probably my parents' divorce. I just had never dealt with anything like that. And especially so close to home. Like, I feel like I went through a really big breakup. It kind of fucked me up for a little bit, but like nothing compared to my parents' divorce. I always say it's like they divorced me (laughs) to my friends because like I find during like I use comedy to like cope with trauma or just like serious things. So I'm always like, yeah, when my parents divorced me on Horror Nights that one year, (laughs) which like is literally is true. Um, I went to Universal Horror Nights and I was like, nothing can scare me. But yeah, I just I felt so shocked and confused. And I like questioned. It felt like everything. I looked up to my parents so much and I was like, so this is obviously going to happen to me. if This happened to you guys. And I looked up to you so much. It's definitely fucked me up with dating. I don't know. It's just scary. In my head, I'm like, I can imagine getting married I can't imagine staying married (laughs) or like finding someone I like for the duration of a marriage of a lifetime. Like just because I'm like, if my parents are great people, this is like how I think if my parents are great people and I look up to them as people so much and they raised such a good family and everything was perfect. Not that it was perfect, but like in the grand scheme of things, it was fucking great. And that didn't work out. Like how in the hell would that happen to me? So that's kind of how I think. So yeah, that was the worst non-physical pain I've ever been in. (laughs) Unfortunately. This is a great question. I'm going to need time to think about it. How can you become a better person? How can I become a better person? I'm really trying to think. I'm like, I can't think of anything. I'm just like so fabulous. No, I'm kidding. Um, How can I become a better person? I don't know why this is coming to me. And it's kind of similar to a previous answer, but like, I feel like I let a lot of things slide and I'm like almost too happy go lucky all the time. Like, I'm like, oh, it's fine that that person kind of wronged me or wronged a friend or whatever. I just like, I let a lot of uh, people get away with a lot of things. And I genuinely think I could be a better person. Like, that's not always the right thing to do. I think I could be a better person by standing up for myself, standing up for others. Like, I definitely am more comfortable standing up for others than myself, but I still think that would help that person learn and become a better person if I was a better person and like stood up for myself and told them like that wasn't right or that was wrong or, you know, we should go over this or fix this or whatever. I feel like that's me not speaking up and like, And I'm talking about the little things. Of course, when there's a big thing, I like speak up. But when there's like little things, I feel like I let too much slide. And I need to be more upfront about even the little things because those pile up on each other. Those little things pile up on each other. And eventually it becomes a big thing. So I'm really trying to not be afraid of like the minor consequences that that'll have like me speaking up or standing up for myself or others because I think in the long run it's gonna be a way bigger consequence and that's not worth it so I think that's how I can be a better person I'm sure there's a gazillion other things I can do but that's what's like kind of resonating with me right now and like not being afraid to disagree because I feel like our generation is so like canceling someone is so normalized which is so bananas for doing like one silly little thing whereas like if we just like brought up beforehand when they kind of did something a little bad here and there or whatever I know this is like this can be taken out of context in a bad way but I don't know I just feel like I should be better at standing up for myself or, or being okay with disagreeing and being like hey I didn't think that was good that you did that and being okay to disagree I guess Finding the comfort in the uncomfortable positions. Oh, this is a crazy question. What insecurity of yours holds you back the most? There's a bunch of different ways. I feel like it used to be (laughs) 
two things. Like, I'm going to say physical. It used to be my double chin <laughs> and my acne because I feel like my like in high school, I wanted to be a YouTuber so badly and I just wouldn't upload because I would film everything and then I'd look back at the footage and I would hate the way I looked. And it was always like my double chin, which I just like from certain angles, I just naturally have a worse one than others. You know what I mean? Like I still dead ass guys, like I want to get surgery right here. And I know you're watching this and you're like, TK, you don't need that. But like it, I don't know why. Like, I've definitely let it slide way more. Not let it slide, but I've accepted it way more. Like, that's just how I am. Like, but, like, it definitely holds me back. And I hate it. I still hate it. So I'm like, I want to fix it. <laughs> but I also don't want to get surgery. Like, I want to, like, I, it pisses me off when some people get surgery. But I'm also like, if that's an insecurity of yours, you're, you should be able to accept that. Or you should be able to change that or do whatever the fork you want with it. I don't know. This is, like, my inner dialogue. Yeah, I would say that like recently when I've been breaking out, like it just refers or like makes me not want to film because I don't want to look at it in the edit. Those are more physical things. What's like a deep one? What insecurity of yours holds you back the most? Um, I feel like I hold myself back a lot with dating. Like I used to be such a like almost serial dater. Like I always had like a bunch of crushes. I always had a guy that I was like having a fling with or hooking up with or whatever. And like recently, I feel like the doubt that it won't work out like holds me back. Like I'm like, oh, I'm not going to find someone. So may as well not try, which is stupid. I need to keep my expectations high, but also like accept the fact that it's going to take a while to find someone good. I think also I've never really found anyone in Los Angeles that literally has ever piqued my interest <laughs> which is so sad so like that almost makes me insecure with dating in LA like I hate blaming the city but like I'm like what's what's going on here like what is it because I I have no problems finding guys that I like or that like me or like there's just like a connection everywhere else I go. And for some reason in LA, like I struggle so much. So I feel like knowing that I've struggled for such a long period of time in LA, like that kind of makes me insecure with putting myself out there. Cause I'm like, okay, clearly it hasn't happened the last couple of years. Does that make sense? I don't know. I don't mean to be a negative Nancy, but I'm just trying to be real, like, and realistic. Like that's how I think. So I'm trying to get better. I realized that I just need to be like, this is in my schedule. I'm dating. It's just a full-time job and I need to accept that. Like if I want to have a boyfriend, which I'm like itching to have one as of recently, like I need to put the time and effort in. So yeah, I don't know. Do any of you guys feel like that way when you're dating in your city? Is this just a, an LA thing? Because I feel like I have this conversation with girlies in LA all the time who I think are so cool and so hot and have so much going for them and I'm like what's the problem like for some reason it's so hard to date here do you have problems like this in your city I honestly hope not I feel like every time I go home I go to New York I go to Chicago I go to Europe I find guys that I'm interested in and also I think it's like not only is it me not finding interest in the guys like I also feel like guys come up to me way more in other places versus like here. And I like being pursued. <laughs> like I go after literally everything I want in life. I am like slightly in a weird way reserved, but also not reserved with dating. Okay, Making Moves listeners, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking up on your credit score? Didn't think so. At Chime, that's exactly what they do. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. To start your credit journey with Chime, sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash TK. That's Chime.com slash TK. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank N.A., 
pursuant to a license from Visa USA. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime credit builder visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except that money pass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. In one word, describe how you feel right now. Tired? <laughs> feel like I, I just hosted my friend, my childhood friend Annie here for the weekend and it was so forking fun, but we did so much and I'm exhausted. And last week was a busy ass week of work. I didn't like get my weekend or my one day to like rejuvenate. So I'm just like <sighs> trying to power through and I'm going out of town this week. I don't know. I'm tired. That would be the word. Who in your life can you be most vulnerable with? Ooh, I feel like Loki Alicia, <laughs> which is so silly, but like Alicia and Ashley, like I feel like I can just be my full self with and tell them anything. I feel like I can like be very real with my brother too or my mom, but like honestly not the way I can with Alicia and Ashley. I feel like they just get me on a deep level and I feel like I get them on a deep level. Sometimes with like family, as much as I'm like close with my family, it's easier to talk about things like without your family being involved. Like, I don't know. Are you missing anyone right now? Do you think they are missing you too? I feel like I miss my friend Libby, which I'm seeing her this weekend. So I'm so fucking excited. I haven't seen her in like months. And I don't know. I love Libby. I Y'all know how like important hometown friends are to me and just like friends that aren't in this industry and honestly that don't even live here because I feel like I get just like wrapped up in my bubble and so nice to like realize there's other issues there's bigger problems there's there's just so much outside of my bubble that is to learn or to understand or just to like be distracted by sometimes and I love hanging out with Libby for that reason because I feel like I can be I can talk to her about what's going on in my life and she's like she's so interested and and, and is awesome and gets so excited for me but also like she brings me into a whole other same with Annie like a whole other life or world that I'm just like not as much a part of and it's so fun to like almost like remove myself from my bubble and realize my problems aren't that big of a deal so yeah I'm so excited to be to see Libby and honestly I think she's missing me too we're, we're like texting so excited to see each other so yeah I also feel like Libby is one of my like main friends I talk about boys with the most and like for some reason some of my friends here in LA just don't care to talk about guys I love talking about guys and we're like always talking about who we're dating who we're interested in who we have a crush on like who we should text how we should get to so-and-so's party like we I just love talking about guys with her so I'm excited about that what has been your happiest memory in the past year? Oh my God. I will say my Europe trip, like specifically being in London with all of my friends, I remember being like, this is so forking fun. And I was really proud of like saving up for that, planning it, like making it happen. Like it's so easy to like, I feel like talk or get excited or like, you know, talk about the idea of going on a trip, but like actually doing it in such a short amount of time like I did, like was a really like fulfilling feeling and going like challenging myself to like even like Trevor couldn't get on the same flight as me or like, you know, he had to leave early and like me having to travel by myself and figure it out was just it felt rewarding and fun and like challenging and exciting. Yet that was super fun. I feel like also like I love Super Bowl weekend, <laughs> which is so stupid, but like that was so fun. Um, I I really developed a new fun friend group here, so that's been a lot of fun. Going to Indiana last year for homecoming was a freaking blast. Those are some of my favorite memories, I would say. When was the last time you felt truly understood by somebody? 
Who was it and what did they understand? I feel like <laughs> I'm trying to trying to not say someone obvious because like obviously I just Alicia and Ashley like I feel like are who I'm closest to. I feel like Gracie who is on my management team and what's funny is I actually we went to fit them together and I like Loki kind of connected her with my manager and she's like on my management team now it's like a long story but I went to dinner with her and I felt like I feel like she just gets me like she fully understands why I am the way I am like why I can't upload as much as I want to like I feel like she understands my vision for me myself my brand she understands the things I struggle with I went to dinner with her and I literally like I was like crying <laughs> and I've like I was I really felt understood and I felt very grateful so yeah probably Gracie shout out Gracie love her this is a great question what limiting belief is holding you back the most right now my greatest struggle in life literally is me thinking that I have to hit a b and c to be able to do d so that's why I'm like so psychotic about the quote launch now adjust later because like there's never going to be a good time you're never going to reach a b and c to reach d like you just have to like jump into the d the deep end and even now like I'm always like I wish I had time more time to do the things I want to do and it's like shut the fuck up and just do them. Do you know what I mean? Like I, when I say that I get annoyed with myself because I'm like, you actually can, you just would have to cut back on other things. So like, I don't want to hear myself complain about it. So that's something I struggle with. Like I'll even be like, Oh, when my acne clears up, like I'll vlog the way I want to, which is so what the fuck that is so fucked up. Like actually I'll be like, when I get verified I'll be able to do this and it's just like that is so not true like being in the entertainment world more than anything means you can jump like from one letter to another like it's not a direct path like no one has a direct path it's all over the place and it's like you just have to dive into it and do whatever the fork you are complaining about because it's never going to get easier so yeah I'm just like that's why I always am saying launch now, just later, because it's like I resonate so much with that quote. So, yeah, I would say like me thinking that what limiting belief is like right now would be like, oh, I don't have enough time. And it's like, yeah, I don't. But if I would stop going out as much or stop having such a good social life or, you know what I mean, like doing shit like that. Or maybe if even, even I stopped working out as much which is like I don't want to do that but like there's things I can give and take so that I have more time to do the things the thing that I'm complaining about not doing right now so I need to really work through my schedule and figure that out I'm like low-key inspiring myself right now <laughs> okay this is kind of like a weird question to ask myself but it's how would you describe me to a stranger so I'm gonna s basically describe myself to a stranger as if y'all are a stranger which this is really weird and hard fun outgoing easy to get along with i i think that i can get along with pretty much anyone like i'll find a common ground i'm like confident in that um motivating like i feel like i that's one thing that i love doing is like motivating my friends to do the thing they've always wanted to do gassing them up you know i don't know just like getting someone excited about whatever it is. I love doing that and I feel like I'm good at that. And I feel like I'm good at that because I need that. <laughs> so I like do what I want. I feel like I have a hard time having people that find people that like actually motivate or gas me up. Cause I think a lot of people think I have it all together. And because I'm motivating others, like I'm fine. I think people forget, I don't know. So yeah, I really like cherish when I find friends that gas me up the way I gas them up because that's just like natural for me to do. But um, I think because I am, I do present myself as like outgoing, happy-go-lucky, like excited, which I am. Like that's not inauthentic. It's just sometimes like I could really use that. <laughs> so I've like 
trying to surround myself with people that gas me up just as much as I gas them up is like very important to me. How else would I describe myself? I would say I'm like loyal, very loyal, um, like reliable. Like I'm the type of person like I almost show up too much. Like I need more time for myself. I feel like I'm <laughs> this is almost to almost to a fault. I'm inclusive. Like I'm almost like invite too many people <laughs> or um, it, like I'll invite the random person we met at so and so. So like I think. But I think that's good in L.A. Like a lot of people are exclusive and are weird and like won't give you the time of day unless you are bigger than them or like have more followers than them or can bring more value to the table or so and so is your aunt or, or uncle. Like I know so many people that I've met, which is so weird. I've met them multiple times. I've been to their house multiple times. I We've had conversations multiple times. We've gotten a drink together like and you know, they don't follow me back or they, I, I always have to say hi or they like somehow always forget, not necessarily my name, but like things that we've talked about or I don't know. It's just, or I don't have their number. I'm like, that's so fucking weird to me. Like I can't imagine getting, meeting someone literally like more than 10 times and not like getting their number or following them or like, I, I don't know. It's just weird. It's just so weird to me. And I know like, I don't even care about the like follower like that, like the getting a follower. Like it's not that. I just feel like now like that's the like more common way to connect even then. Like I feel like giving my number is very personal. Whereas like giving my Instagram, that's like not very personal. I don't know. I just feel like that's so weird to me when people are weird like that, which most of the time it's because of like something previously that had happened and someone overstepped their boundary and got weird or creepy so I understand when people are guarded but like I'm like Alicia Marie is one of the biggest people in the world and she is inclusive so no one has any excuse <laughs> um yeah I think I'm inclusive what else I should say something like negative <laughs> I feel like I'm very I have like a strong presence which can be like a blessing or a curse to some people, depending on who it is. Like some people live for it. They like the energy. They like the spice. They like the juice. You know what I mean? Sometimes I think it's too much or too overbearing or I'm, you know, a, I'm a little bit stepping on their limelight or their spotlight or whatever it is. Um, so I think that can be sometimes a fault. Like I, I feel like definitely in LA, like I've, I know my role when walking in a room, like whose time it is to shine or whatever. But, um, I don't know. Sometimes I think I, I don't know, maybe I'm a little overbearing for some people's personalities, but I, I am good. Like I'm a chameleon. Like I can adapt to others well and like their vibe. So it just depends. I don't know. I want to give myself permission to feel relaxed, <laughs> like guilt free, relaxing. That's what I would say. What's the hardest part about dating me? Oh, gosh. I think I have a lot of unsaid expectations. Like, of course, there's the obvious, like, have a job, like, be respectful. Like, there's, yeah, of course, you're gonna have that expectation, right? But, like, I definitely secretly note when someone does something that I don't like, and I almost, like, I don't tell them, which is bad. Like I should be like, hey, that bothered me when you did this. But instead I like, I literally note it and put it in the back of my head. And then the next time something else like that happens, like I, it's like a tally, like racking up. And I need to not do that. I need to be like, hey, it actually bothers me when you do this. Or hey, like, can you try and do this this way next time or whatever? I, I do have a lot of expectations. <laughs> um, again, blessing and, and a curse. But I don't like to like, at the end of the day, I'd rather have too many expectations than too little. Like, again, to reiterate, like I am confident in in who I am and what I've built and I work my ass off and I don't want anyone to dim that um, or be like less than. Like they should be adding value to my life, not making it worse. So I think I, I, I am confident saying I'd rather have more expectations than not. But like me thinking of the person dating myself that I can see how that's annoying how I have like 
random expectations that I just never said. <laughs> um, like, how are you supposed to know them so you can meet them? So I understand that. Maybe I should be more communicative. Like, hey, I love it when A, B, and C, or I love it when you do this. I don't like it, it be upfront. I think the also the hardest part about dating is like, at the end of the day, when I like someone, I need to be pursued. Like, I don't like being the one making the plans, chasing after. I like being liked. Like, that's attractive to me when someone like pursues me and likes me. That turns me on. <laughs> so someone that's not afraid to like, they're like, I don't give a fuck. I like you. Like, I don't care what anyone thinks. I don't care how embarrassing this is. That is so attractive to me. And it shows confidence. So, yeah, I think that's hard with dating me because I won't put much effort in at the beginning. But once you have you, me hooked, I'm hooked. So it's worth it when you put that, the effort in. This is a crazy question. Have you changed your mind about anything recently? Yeah, I feel like my I've been changing my mind a lot about a lot of things recently. One huge thing, which I know I've chatted about a lot on this podcast, is like I do not have the desire to go out the way I used to and like drink the way I used to. So I've changed my mind on that, like feeling like I need to go out to be fulfilled or happy all the time. Like I can genuinely, I'm, I'm I'm so proud of saying that like I can make myself happy on my own being in my apartment by myself because if you would have asked me even like six months ago, if I could do that, I like, I, that would scare me. I would be like, I can't even be alone. <laughs> so now that I've like, uh, I've changed my mind about that. Like that being, being alone is fun and it rocks and it's like rejuvenating. Versus like, yes, I do get rejuvenated by seeing people, but I'm also realizing the toll it kind of takes on me. Oh, this is a crazy question. What compliment do you think I like to hear the most? I'm trying to think of the compliment I love to hear the most. Honestly, I think my like most cherished compliment is in regards to like, well, two things. One in regards in regards to work, like I I really fucking appreciate when someone that like I look up to in the industry or I respect like lets me know that like they think my work is good. Like someone co genuinely complimenting me on my podcast because they actually listened or being like, dude, you're actually good at making videos or whatever it is. Like I, you don't understand how much that means to me because I feel like I'm always like second guessing the content I put out like obviously like when you guys comment like that like at, it's like the specific comments that are like dude the editing editing in this was crazy like I can tell you take time like finding the music like that is like my favorite compliment in the world because I'm like it, it just like it's almost like you're appreciating and understand the work it took to put into that or, or someone that's like you were you're meant to do this or you're so good at that or like you were born to do this like that <sighs> Because I feel like we doubt ourselves ine inevitably all the time. Honestly, it's never really like a physical thing. Like, yeah, obviously that makes me feel good in the moment. But like what stands out to me is when people are like complimenting me on like, I guess, my character or just like my work, especially when they're like, dude, you're so fun to be around or like something like that. Like, I feel like I hardly ever hear that, even though like I know I am fun to be around, <laughs> but like. It's low-key like a weird compliment. Like it's easier to be like, your shirt's so cute. But like I want to get better at that as being like, hey, like I really admire your, the way you talk to people or I really admire the like effort you put into like trying to hang out with people or whatever. Like I feel like I want to get better at that because I know how much I appreciate that. What is your most toxic trait you can admit to? I feel like definitely along the lines of like, never being fully satisfied and also not only in myself but I I won't be fully satisfied with others either like I'm like let me give a good example even like my to-do list today <laughs> like it's unrealistic and I like probably won't get everything done and I'm gonna be mad tonight like I feel like I can't fully ever be like wow I'm so 
happy I got this much done or whatever. Like I really do. And I judge others too. I'm like, that's all you did today. Like, I, which is bad. Like I shouldn't do that. I don't know. I feel like I judge others like work ethic a lot. I'm like, well, I did this. So you should be able to like, I don't want to hear you complain about blah, blah, blah. I'm sure we all do this, but yeah, that's kind of my toxic trait. I'm trying to think of like, oh, my other toxic trait with dating <laughs> is I'll be like at a bar if some guy comes up to me and talks to me, he'll be like, do you want me to get you a drink? And I'll be like, no, I'm good. And like <laughs> my toxic trait is I still want him to buy me one. That's my toxic trait. Scratch the other one. I like expect people, yeah, like with guys, I'll be like, no, nah, I'm like, I kind of want to hang out with my friends tonight. And I want them to be like, but I want to see you. Like <laughs> that's my toxic trait. It's not good. But n they'll just do what I say. I'll be like, no, I don't want to drink. And then they won't give me a drink. And then I'll be like, what the heck? Why didn't he get me a drink? Like, that's toxic. I shouldn't do that. But I like, I don't know if in my head, I like liked the challenge. Like I, someone that would get me a drink even after I said no, like, I'm like, that's a keeper. But that's not good. I shouldn't think like that. Okay. I'm going to go into your guys' questions now because I feel like that's enough of the we're not really strangers. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, definitely do. I feel like it's fun over there. I'm always posting like question stickers and polls and honestly, random chaotic parts of my life. <laughs> Have you ever had body image issues? If so, how did you overcome them? Yes, I feel like every day I struggle with body image. I hate talking about this shit because I'm like, I feel like I'm so filtered and I don't op I don't speak freely because I'm worried about the response, which I wish I could just speak freely and not worry about the response. But that's just like, unfortunately, the way the internet works is like, I have to worry about the response. But I'm going to try and speak freely here. I think one thing that really helps me is just remembering that like genetics are like 90% of everything. So like the way a person is or like the way they're raised, like it's just how, why a person is the way they are. Again, same with genetics. Like the reason my body is the way it is, is like 90%, I would say, because from genetics. And that's just like, that's just how it is. And honestly, for some reason, that just brings me peace because it's unfixable. Like, and I love my body. Like, I try to. And, like, some days I really do love it. And my body is awesome. But, like, remembering that it's, like, not here. I think also, one, remembering that most bodies are genetics. And then the second thing is my body is healthy. Like, I think prioritizing health versus the look of it is, like, what I try and remember and like, what is it doing for me today? Like, it's getting me through the day. It's getting me up. It's like just did a crazy workout. Um, the fact that I can like run around all day. I can go out, get drunk, wake up the next day, work out. Like, that's pretty amazing. So I think I try and remember it like big picture wise. That helps me like overcome any body image issue. Honestly, like I would say that's the main thing. And I think just realizing that there's like bigger fish to fry like there's bigger issues in the world like why am I going to fixate on this one little body when there's millions of other bodies and things going on in the world does that make sense I hope so what are you working on to improve yourself right now I feel like two things one getting back on my gym grind instead of being like oh I just want to go for an hour like I'm trying to make more like athletic goals so that and then to um i'm really trying to execute my ideas it's really hard for me to have like I, I feel like i have great ideas it's hard for me to execute them so like actually putting action behind them and like fully executing them not just like half-assing or starting it it's easy to start it's hard to finish so i'm trying to finish strong on things how to have difficult conversations one thing that i've been doing lately that i absolutely love is audio messages because especially with like obviously don't do this with like a work thing or like I'm trying to think of a bad scenario but like with a friend or like you know someone that isn't like a co-worker or like I don't know where it would be in professional to do audio messages 
I don't know. I think it's a great way to do to like have conversations because you can like hear the tone versus like when people like send me a long paragraph with like periods that like literally is an automatic like anxiety attack coming like I don't like that like I either like the small bubbles which honestly I don't even like texting because I'm just like I'm reading it the way that I think you're saying it which I'm gonna like if we're having a deep hard conversation I'm gonna read it like you're saying it mean versus when I'm like hey no this is not to make you mad I just wanted to bring it up so it doesn't happen again it's totally okay that it happened you know, it really bothered me when you did this. And like, I get it. I hear where you're coming from. I know you're having a bad day. It just kind of upset me. And I wanted to let you know because I don't want it to happen again. And I just want to avoid it. And you know, I love you, blah, 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 blah. Like hearing my tone, it just makes it so much more casual and relaxed and like fixable. I feel like when like the way I read hate comments are literally like, you are ugly bitch. Like that's how I read it versus like, well, that's actually mean. But someone that's like, I didn't like the song that you used in this video. I read it like, I didn't like the fucking song you used. Like when really it's just someone being like, hey, I didn't really like that song you chose. It's not my vibe. Like I, something about the tone and the way you deliver, like the way you deliver the message is I feel like so underrated. So I feel like having hard conversations are great via audio message on your phone because even like, I don't know, texting is so premeditated and not that audio messages aren't, but it allows yourself to talk openly instead of like texting is just like scary and like triggers me because it reminds me of when I would get in like fights with my friends in high school and we were like mean. <laughs> so something about like the audio message delivery is way more casual, but it's still effective and it doesn't blow up into a bigger fight. I feel like it helps resolve things. So yeah, that would be my piece of advice. And just honestly, like the hardest part about having hard conversations is like the waiting period to have it. So when someone's like, hey, can we talk? And you're like, yeah, Thursday. And then you're like stressed out the entire time until Thursday versus like audio messages is like, hey, I've been thinking about this. Let me know if you'd like to talk about this in person later. But... I want to get the ball started. I'm not that mad. I just like wanted to blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Something about that. And it still allows the time. It still allows the other person to respond and like think about it and have time to marinate. Like, I don't know. I really like it. So I feel like sometimes when I'm like having a tough conversation in person, I'm like rambling. I'm not saying what I want to say. Audio message, I feel like is the best of both world worlds. Would you ever consider a hair color other than blonde? Honestly, no. I don't think so. Okay. I think that's everything. I hope that you learned something new from me today. Um, it's scary for me to like be on the other side of an interview. And I kind of wanted to do we're not really strangers because I feel like it's like low key interviewing myself in a deep way. Let me know if you like this type of podcast because I would love to do like a series on this. I think that'd be really fun. And why don't you comment down below who you feel like you can be most vulnerable or most yourself around and tell me why. Like, is it your grandparent? Is it a sibling? Is it your best friend? Let's chat in the comments. I'd love to read them. Anyway, have the best day ever. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all the things. It's TK's Juicy Polls across the board or Taylor King on YouTube. And make someone's day this week. Go out of your way to make their day. It'll come back. Karma's a thing, y'all. I love you guys. Peace.